All right, so your Astra M2012 uh, two group head. So it's gonna come like this. It's meant to be hardwired in. Um, I took your standard L1430. It's rated 30 amp, 125 volt to 250 volt. So what I've done is I've just taken it apart. They have two screws right here. You just unscrew them. It pulls apart this. So anyway, you pull your cord through. This right here, fold those together. Just slide it on. Because that's, that's what the screws are going to screw into. Alright, next. This was something normally these right here would be painted two brass one ground and one silver the two brass are your hot the green is ground and the other one's a neutral wire if you have a four I'm using a three wire so I'll just put it on my two hots and my ground uh, if it doesn't if it's like this one and isn't colored the L is your ground if you're looking at it like a clock that would be six o'clock your three and your nine o'clock are your two hots and this is your neutral a little bit of information that took me like 20 minutes to find so here your green is your ground obviously your black and your white are hot so you're going to connect them to the corresponding so it's going to go in G X and Y so I've stripped them you un you loosen up the screw and you shove it in there just like so, one wire at a time. And then you tighten down. I give it a pretty good tight. Whenever you're pull because this is you're gonna be pulling on it and give me a hold something. Give it a quick little tug to make sure. And then I always go with white on the left, black on the right. That's not necessary, just as long as they're both hot. And how do you know which one's hot again? You're looking at it like a clock, mm -hmm. and your L is in the 6 o'clock position. Your 1's to, to 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock are your hot. Okay. But in a normal circumstance, most plugs, L1430s uh, that you're going to buy, two of them will be brass, one will be green or painted green, and the other will be silver. Your two brass are your hot, and that's with most plugs. Just keep a bind on it, keep it in there. There are no videos on how to do this. Yeah. Why I'll is go. that again? Huh? Why is that again that there's no videos on how to do this? Alright, so yeah, I, I do not accept any kind of responsibility. This should be done by a licensed electrician. So, do it at your own risk. But, <laughs> I imagine you'll be cheaper on yourself than an electrician will be. So. I hope this works. At least I know I'm cheaper on myself than an electrician would be. Then you line up. There's a hole there. There's a hole there. Obviously, you line those up. And then down there, I don't know if you can see it, there's two holes. Mm -hmm. Right? You're going to line those up. And then these two screws, is, I, I took them out earlier. And that's it. That's it. You have a plug now. So what kind of plug is this? 
This is an L14 uh, 30 amp. 125-250. And this doesn't come with the machine? No, it does not come with the machine. But you can buy them at your local hardware store, whichever one you prefer. Uh, sometimes your smaller hardware stores won't have them, but most do. This isn't the extension cord that you made? No, this oh. is not the extension cord. You also made an extension cord. Well, they, I couldn't find a, a 220 that was rated for 30 amps they it just everything was 125 so whatever you don't have you make all right okay. all right so your water inlet is underneath your drip tray I'm using a 3 h compression valve uh, supply line that's it easily hooks to it you go finger tight and then you go Tighten it up one time with a wrench and you're good to go. You want to stop there. You don't want to over tighten it. You'll, you'll mess it up. And you bought more. Yeah, okay. well, I mean, most places will have on my other end of, to keep your warranty, you have to go through a water softener system. And this, I ordered one with it. It's, all, it's a, uh, I had to come from 3 8 So I had to do a little finagling. You just get a 3 8 uh, reducer. So you go uh, 3 8 to a quarter, I think it is. No, I think this is 3 8. I think you went, I think I went half inch to a quarter. Okay. Because we have like to that. drain, we're mobile, so we have to drain yes. into a drain. Yes. Not just into. We're using, yeah, we're using the drain. drain system, yeah. All right. That's it. Yep. Alright, what are you doing? Uh, I gotta drill a hole for the water supply and the power cord. Okay. What it's about the water drain line? It'll come up through that hole as well. Okay. And it'll go, it goes into this right here, but the bucket will sit here. And okay. This is the water softener. Anyway. Alright. But you gotta make sure that you're close uh -huh. enough spot. You can get a long spot line, so. Mm -hmm. So you're drilling through that metal? Yes. Oh, okay. Bye bye. <laughs> so you're feeding the power line through there? Yeah. And the water line? And you want to make sure you don't have any burrs. After you get done cutting the metal, it's gonna, there's gonna be some sharp edges. It'll you cut us if we're wiping under it. And well, stuff. not only that, you don't want it cutting your cord. Oh, yeah. Or even nicking it, you know, like so. Make sure you file those down. All right, screw the water filter to the wall. Yep, check. Screw the water to the water filter, yep. water line, and tighten it. And tighten one time the same thing, finger tighten, and then one good tighten. Yeah. All right, what are you doing now? I'm a uh, Attaching the pump. Yeah, attaching the filter. <laughs> Three eighths to once again a compression fitting. You just push that in, tighten it on, and I put tape on both ends. It came with a valve. This is a one way shut off valve. Um, this is your pump, TDR Force uh, bottle water dispenser. It runs at a uh, 50 to 60 psi. And uh, the machine recommends 50 or 40, I think it is. And that's going to go in the top of that bottle. Yes. Okay. Uh, this runs the suction thing that runs out of here. That'll pump it into this, which will in turn pump it into the machine. I'm your face. All right. So you got it filled up? All right. So open that. Okay. Got power. Oh my god. Did you fill it up with water though? Huh? Or is that just happening that's what, now? That's what it's pumping? Yeah. So tell us what you're doing. So you hook it up to the generator or whatever your power source is. You turn you turn your uh, steam on on. And okay. you open the make sure your water pump's on. Water pump's on, okay. And then you turn this on and you keep your steam line on. It's going to pump for a little bit. 
it'll probably go off and unless both these light up you toggle off your switch for 15 seconds okay so they didn't light up yet all right so we're gonna wait for a little bit we need a bucket for the drain too so we don't I need to grab a bucket. I'm scared it's going to like drain out on that electricity. Put it back on. And then it should go through the whole process again. Okay. The pump will kick on. Okay. a lot of water in it already. Look at all that. Okay, so still no light here. So that's what we're waiting for, right? The ready light? Okay, didn't you say, didn't it say it took some time though? Like 20 minutes? Well, it'll take 10 to 20 minutes to heat up. To After be ready the to lights go on? Yeah. Okay, but we're doing this for the first time, like opening yeah, this, it, yeah, right? this is the prom. Yeah. Okay. So when you're driving around, there's going to be water in that thing. I think we should try to park it on the weekends and just not bring it home as much as possible. 15 seconds. That sounds crazy. Look how much water it's filling up with. It's like already yeah, like two and a half gallons. Liters. like that sound okay it's it's got lights yay so now we wait 15 to 20 minutes 10 to 20 and just whenever this starts steaming okay right now the reason it's kicking in so far is because it's using all of its heating stuff to heat up that's that why the generator yeah. like that okay awesome we'll check back okay so it's been on for like 10 minutes and we're starting to get some, some steam so we're supposed to wait till, oh my gosh, it's working. Right, so steam's coming out of both of them now. How long do we let the steam come out? It's not coming out of both of them. Uh oh. Is it supposed to come out of this one too? No, I, I don't have that one on. Oh, I thought it said to open all of them. No, just one. Oh, okay, open just one. Okay, you want to steam some milk or? No, whenever this gets between uh, right here 14 to six, 17, it's ready to, to, to rock and oh, roll. Okay, so we got to wait for that to get yeah. to 14 and 17. What's this one on this side? That's the pump pressure. Okay, That's, uh, so you want it to be where it's at, just yeah, out I of guess. the red? I don't, I don't know. In the middle is good, I guess? Yeah, I guess. So, and can you pull two shots at once? Oh, oh, I have another cup if you need it. What the hell is that? It's heating up again, so it's not ready? No, it's... Oh, okay. much coffee but still or that much milk wow that's nice too huh mm -hmm. okay let's get my finger up there
It's it looks like it has more crema. Yeah, it does. Did you tamp that one? No. It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's espresso. It's not. It's not overly bitter. It's just the right amount of bitter. I like that crema though. That's weird. It's too fine. Yeah. Smell it. Is it still bad? That one doesn't taste as good as the first one. But I mean, it's espresso, so, you know. It's not bad. It's strong like you want it to be. I'm gonna look at it now. Yeah, it's nice and strong. Lots of crema here. All right, so now we're just trying to figure out the correct grind. I think he said he's using two and a half on our grinder, and I'll do a more in-depth video about figuring all that out, but um, it's supposed to be self-tamping, um, but we're finding that a light tamp helped it not channel through and one tasted a little more bitter and that was the one that had the channel through it so I'm the one tasting all the coffee so um, yeah um, so he's gonna go get two more and we're gonna run a little test and oh I'm so thankful I'm so thankful I can breathe again I can't believe this thing is in here I cannot believe how much these things cost um, so yeah I'm not sure if we're gonna open tomorrow or not we need to um, so I'm assuming he's going to want to, but we'll have to probably go in really early to get ready and make sure we're ready to rock and roll. Woo! Okay. So we are rock and roll. just wanted to show that it's working and show you guys kind of the setup. So she's been doing awesome, pulling great shots, steaming milk fast. Um, so... Okay. What basically I had to do is drill a hole through this and then I put um, just tape around it so because I have a metal top so it wouldn't be scraping on these. Got a uh, 3 8 compression drain line or supply line. 3 8 compression supply line uh, that comes to my filter and then my filter comes off and it runs to this pump, TDR Force, it's a 60 PSI, and it, I get it out of a five gallon water jug, and it's got a little float switch on the bottom. Um, and then the drain. And then it has a drain that's in this right here, in the, in the tray, in the drip tray, that just drains into this. I just drilled a hole in there and just ran the drain in there, strapped it to the wall so it doesn't move while I'm moving. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the setup. Awesome. Any questions, let us know, guys. All right, so hopefully that was helpful for you. I'm Danny, this is Ben. And um, yeah, hopefully you subscribe. And um, if you have questions, go ahead and let us know. We'll do our best to answer. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye. All right, so right now he's doing a flush, a back flush. It's an eighth of a teaspoon ish. Blonde filter, no holes. And this is the fully cap. That's some really good stuff. So we'll put a link for it. You one, two, three, four, five, and stuff. You're gonna do that about five or six times. We do this at the end of every day. You're basically looking for once this stops being sudsy. Okay. Yep. 
then you're gonna uh, you know dump that out I rinse it out and then you're gonna run this with nothing in it about four to five more times until make sure everything's washed out flushed out this prevents scale from building up in there it gets a lot of the old grounds if you're uh, if you're a coffee truck man you need to do it pretty much every day it keeps your machines healthy running clean you know you don't want to just not do it yeah. it's super easy and it's it saves you hundreds if not thousands